Hi everybody, I'm Leah of CJ Drill, and today I'm going to show you how to repair drywall mistakes. Let's get started. Okay, so what I have here is I have a mock-up that I created to demonstrate really common drywall issues. Okay, so number one is there's a pipe coming out of the wall. When you cut your drywall and you put it up, you realize that you made a mistake measuring. And so then you have to cut a second hole and you're left with a large opening here. So our next problem is you or somebody you know did a really bad taping job. You've got bubbling tape here that hasn't adhered and you've got a really rough first coat. Well, I'm going to show you today how to fix it. Okay, so let's take a look at our first problem. This is where there's a pipe coming out of the wall and you've cut one hole and then a second hole. Now normally it wouldn't be a problem that you have a small diameter pipe and a larger hole, okay? Because you really want a little bit of clearance between the drywall and the pipe itself to account for vibration, movement of the pipe, and sometimes the pipe sweats. So you don't really want that pipe plastered into the wall with joint compound. A little bit of clearance between the pipe and the drywall, that's ideal. And what they normally do is they create an escutcheon for it. That's what this is. And it covers up that big gap, right? But we're going to put our escutcheon up there and guess what? Well, we still have this big hole here. So I'm going to show you next how to repair that and how easily it's done. Now here's the thing. There's a few different pipe patches available okay now what we're going to do is we're going to use this one here okay so this is the pipe material that we're using the pipe patch material we're using what i like about it is it is very very strong there's no way that's going to rip on you in fact even if i tried to tear it i couldn't and that's really what you want so the other thing i like about it is the fact that you can custom cut it to fit your particular situation okay so here's a custom patch that i just cut I'm going to put it against our drywall here, and as you can see, it wraps around that pipe. That's the way I designed it. Now all we have to do is mud this into place, and I'm going to show you how to do that next. So what I have here is I have a setting type joint compound, and that's what you want to use. Don't use the premix because you really want a joint compound that's going to set up very quickly for you. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put mud on the outside. That's going to be a bedding coat for that mesh to sit into. All right, so. I'm going to put my mud there, and a generous amount. Don't be afraid to use too much because that's really what you want for that initial bedding coat. You really want that mesh to really sit inside. Okay, so I've got a generous amount of joint compound on my drywall. Now I'm going to just put my patch in there. I'm going to press down on it. Okay. Now I want you to notice how the joint compound is oozing out of those small holes, and that's going to help lock that patch into place. Okay, so that's our first coat. Now, you're going to have to put on multiple coats, make certain you sand it nice and smooth, and then when you put your escutcheon back up, it can completely cover the fact that you had another large hole there. Now let's move on to our next problem. Okay, so what we have here is we have where the tape has separated from the bedding coat. And of course, the bedding coat is the plaster that rests beneath the tape. Beyond the tape itself bubbling, we just have a really rough job here. And we're going to show you how to fix that. Now here's the thing about joint compound. Joint compound is not waterproof. This material here is very water soluble. The other thing is the drywall itself isn't waterproof either. So what we're going to do is we're going to wet down our joint compound. And we're going to do it in such a way where we're not saturating the drywall. So what I've got is I've got a paintbrush with just some warm water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to brush it on. And what it's going to do is it is going to reactivate the joint compound to a certain extent. Okay? It's going to reactivate it to a certain extent. It's going to allow us to remove that tape and really lay down the really rough areas. Okay, so I've, uh, you know, coated the uh, joint compound with water. It's soaked in. Now sometimes you have to do it more than, than once. You might have to do it two or three times before it really, really penetrates that joint compound. Now I feel like it's penetrated enough. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work the tape off. All right? And I may be able to pull it away completely. And that's what we want. There we go. There's the tape. See that? Now what we're going to do is just going to pull it down. 
Now I'm going to get this last bit here on the bottom. I just want you to notice how easily it's pulling away from the drywall. And that's all you need to do. Okay, so we're going to mud. I'm going to go over this in a second, but I want to point something out to you, and it's this. You know, sometimes you got a piece of tape, it's eight feet long. And if you just have a bubble or a bad section, okay, just cut that section out. Okay, now before we put the mud up, we've got to knock down these hard edges. And the way we're going to do that is with a, a knife. So first I'm just going to try to take some of it off like this. The really high spots, use your knife to just take it off like so. Okay, I've got my mud mixed. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a bedding coat. And I'm just going to cover up the bad joint compound and our seam, okay? And we want to lay it on heavy enough so that it covers up the rough area, okay? That's what we want. We want that rough area covered up. And in addition, we want enough joint compound up there to really bed the tape in. Now I'm just going to lay my tape on top of that bedding coat, right? That's all we're going to do is just lay it down like that. Okay, so I've got my tape on there, but now I have to really lay the tape into the mud. And that's when I come over, I'm going to go over it again with my blade, okay? So I'm just going to start at the bottom, come on up. And what I'm doing is I'm hitting the inside. I'm hitting halfway inside. I want my blade to sit right there in the middle of the tape. That's what I mean by come halfway. Now I'm going to just come on up. I'm going to go over it one more time. So this is our first coat. That's our bedding coat there. As you can see, there's no bubbles there. We're looking pretty good. Okay, we'll let this set up, and then I'll come over it again with another coat, and then another coat until our repair area is completely covered. Okay, so our bedding coat has set up. This is set up now. It's ready for a second coat. But I want to draw your attention to other places on the drywall. Remember this patch here? We're going to go over that as well because that is set. The other thing is there were some other areas of the board that needed attention as well. And what I did to these areas was the same thing that I did with the drywall tape. I wet it down and then I took off the very high areas and then just skimmed over lightly with some joint compound. So now I'm going to apply my second coat. It's going to go on really tight. I'm just going to make it tight. That's what you want. That's how you fix two common drywall mistakes. Now, it's got its second coat. It's going to need a third and maybe even a fourth coat, white sand, and we'll be good to go. This is Leah saying, you, you can do this. See you next time.